Now from time to time I do get comments on the channel regarding the amount of time spent on cars. A lot of people ask how long does it take? And then other people comment on I should have spent more time on it. While 99% of these cars are for a five year old and they're just gonna get banged up. But we have one particular car here that we're doing for a good friend of mine. This is about two years overdue. So we're gonna take that extra time. So in this video, I'm going to attempt to show you how to prepare a casting for Spectre Flame paint, one that would be given to an adult collector, not a five-year-old kid. And I should mention, this is not necessarily focused towards a red line and really not Spectre Flame paint either. It's more of prepping the body. You'll find that when you strip the paint from a Hot Wheels or a Matchbox, that the end result is less than stellar. Cars look smooth because they have a lot of paint on them. When you strip that paint away, you'll find a lot of divots, which we'll show you here shortly. And the more you prep, the better your paint will turn out. Now you could use a high fill primer, which on these cars really doesn't have to be high fill. It can just be a regular primer. If you're gonna be using regular paints, that'll work fine. But if you're using anything with transparency, like a Spectre Flame, or even like a high gloss black, you wanna get rid of all those. And now we'll go over a list of the materials that we use. The first thing is the sandpaper. This particular set is a multi-pack. It's got 400 grit all the way up to 3,000. Costs roughly 10 or $11, and this should be all the sandpaper you need. Now you can take it a step further, and we'll show you the materials we use for that as well. And the next thing you'll need is some water. We're using some smart water here. Probably not the smartest choice in the world because this stuff is expensive but I left it on the bench one evening, so it's become my water source for sanding. And not necessary, but a container to put the water in would be nice. Now you can just pour the water on the sandpaper, but here we're using an M2 container and we just pour the water in there. And the next thing would be a Dremel or a similar tool that you can actually put a buffing pad on to polish up the finish once you're done sanding. And then you'll want to get some sort of buffing pad. Now you can use the stock Dremel buffing pads. They're not the greatest, or you can buy something like this. This is used for jewelers, use this a lot to polish up rings or what have you. And I also have links for these as well. And with that Dremel and buffing wheel, you're going to want some polish. I happen to use the Mother's Mag and Aluminum Polish. There's a variety of polishes out there. Any of them will work just fine. Now that's really all you need to get a good prep. Now if you want to paint Spectra Flame and you don't want any of the brush marks in there, you can take it a step further. Now after you're done with the 3000 grit, and before you actually buff, you can get a set of these micro mesh pads. And I actually use these pads for the wood shop. I use them for turning pens, bottle openers, bottle stoppers, that kind of thing. But they work great for metal as well, because they're meant to be used with water. They also come with this nice color chart and you've got 1500 grit all the way up to 12,000 grit. So since we've already used up to 3000 grit on our sandpaper, so we're gonna go with the white brown first, which is the 3600 grit. So a little finer than the 3000. And then we'll skip to the purple, which I believe is this one. And then lastly, we'll do the royal blue, which is 8000. Now this is probably totally unnecessary, but you can get an idea of the final result. I apologize in advance if the audio portions of this video sound a bit different. Right now I'm speaking into a boom mic, but some of the portions will be on voiceover into a different microphone. I typically use a voiceover when I'm doing the restorations, and part of this video was filmed during the restoration of this particular car. Now the right hand side I've already started sanding, the left I have not. Look at all those bumps and divots. We're going to start out by using 400 grit sandpaper. We're going to be sanding dry to begin with. And it's a lot of sanding. Don't press too hard. You do not want to get rid of the body lines. You can see right here we've got a line that's in the casting. So we're going to continue on with the 400 grit to get rid of that. And here we are after we've sanded 400 grit. Looks pretty good. Now we move on to our 800 grit. And you can see a lot of those lines have disappeared. And now we start with the thousand grit, which is where we start the wet sanding. And again, the finish gets smoother and smoother each time. And last, we'll go ahead and use the 3000 grit, which is the finest grit that I have available in sandpaper. Also, this will be a wet sand. And she's starting to look pretty smooth. 
And now we're going to take the 3600 grit micro mesh, get it good and wet in our water, and then start sanding away. The smoother the finish gets, you'll feel the sandpaper start to feel like it's not doing anything. Now that could be two things. Could be build up, so check for that. If you don't have any build up and you're not wearing away your sandpaper grit, that indicates that the finish is getting smooth with that particular grit. And there we are with 3600. It's looking pretty good. Now this is just sanding, no polish yet. Now we'll move on to the 6000. And as you can see, some of those lines have already disappeared. And last, we're going to try the 8000. And now we have virtually no lines. The next step, apply a thin amount of mother's polish or whatever polish you're using. Then we'll buff it. Now when you're buffing, you don't need a high speed to do so. You could actually probably do this by hand. I believe I had the Dermal on one and you don't need a really heavy pressure. So you can see the reflection of the camera. We'll put our hand behind the camera or around the camera and you can see my fingers in the reflection. I say that's pretty good. Now don't get me wrong, this takes a lot of time. You're not gonna finish this in 20 minutes. We started at 400 grit. We had to sand with 400 for roughly 20 minutes alone. Then we moved up to the 800 grit. Then we moved to the 1500 grit. And then we went to the 3000 grit. Now you can go with grits in between. The only thing that's gonna do is help you, but it's also gonna take more time. So I did a little bit of skipping through the grits to speed up the process a little bit. I believe we still ended up with the same end result all in all, I would say with buffing, sanding, using the micro mesh, all of that, we've roughly got four hours of sanding in this car to get it in this shape. If you're fortunate, you'll actually find a casting that doesn't have many divots at all. This one looked great. Didn't look like it had anything until we stripped the paint. After you're done sanding and before you polish, be sure to put on a set of latex gloves. Your fingerprints can certainly ruin a paint job. So, so once I get to buffing this entire car, I'm going to go ahead and put some gloves on, buff it all out. And then when I'm done buffing, I'm going to keep the gloves on, go to the sink and wash it in warm soapy water. Once I've washed it in warm soapy water, I still have the gloves on. I'm going to go ahead and wash it with some mineral spirits. Now these steps are beyond the sanding prep. Then you go ahead and clean it with a soft cotton or dry cloth. I wouldn't use a paper towel. The paper towel can scratch the surface. Keep your gloves on, let it dry completely. Go ahead and put it on your paint stand with the gloves on. This way you're never gonna to touch the casting with your bare hands, which will cause paint issues. Now these steps are beyond the sanding prep. And I think that'll wrap it up for this one. Hopefully we'll have this project up by this weekend. It depends on paint. Today is Tuesday, September 18th. So we're gonna be cutting it really close. I'd also like to thank all the patrons. I don't have the list in front of me, but I actually have eight of them now, which is not a lot, but it's a great start. I will be making a separate video again about Patreon because I'm gonna to have to change the tiers. We may have to do away with either the $1 level or the $3 level. I would say it's a good chance we're going to do away with a $3 level. Unfortunately, with Patreon, you cannot have a giveaway at any tier. I did not know this. I just got an email regarding that particular subject about uh, 20 minutes ago. And again, in the description located below the video, I have links to all the tools we use. So check those out. If you like the channel, be sure to subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. Your fingerprints can certainly ruin a hand, hand job. Your certain pants. <laughs>